So what we're going to look at today is something called strong induction, and this is another form of mathematical induction. So we're going to be utilizing this in order to prove things like recurrence relations and explicit formulas and, and identities. Um, and what we use strong induction for is, is we use it when weak induction or standard induction is not enough. So in standard induction, we only need to assume that the proposition holds for the kth term, and then we prove that the proposition holds for k plus 1 terms. In some cases, that's just not strong enough. This means that it's not enough to just know that the proposition holds for the kth term. We must know that the proposition holds for all the terms from the basis step to the kth term. All right? So we're going to be utilizing all the values in between the basis step and the kth term uh, in, order for, in our proof. And that's one of the big differences. right? It is the primary difference. Strong induction, as this promise, process is known, is mathematically equivalent to standard or weak induction, but requires us to think a little bit differently about what we're trying to prove, and it also changes how our basis steps work. This kind of proof work can frequently be used when proving explicit functions for recurrence relations because in recurrence relations, we oftentimes need to know that something's going to be the fact for not just like the n minus 1th term, but also the n minus 2th term or the n minus kth term. So that's how we're going to be using, utilizing strong induction. So let's take a look at an example. And the, the example that we're going to use is something called a postage stamp problem. And the postage stamp problem is a canonical example of utilizing strong induction. It's like probably the big one that gets taught and it's actually really good. It's a really great representation of how strong induction works. So what we're going to do is we want to determine the different kinds of postage that we can make from five and six cent stamps. And we'll use strong induction then to prove our hypothesis. So we're going to do a little bit of thought process here and then we're going to go in and utilize strong induction in order to prove. So let's first start out and we'll see that we can, we can actually get five cents of uh, postage from five and six cent stamps. We can do six cents, one six cent stamp. We can do 10 cents. We can do 11 cents. We can do 12 cents. We can't do 13 cents, right? 10 cents is two tens, 11 is six and five, 12 is six and six. We can't do 13. We can't do 14. We can do 15. 16 works. 17 would be 11 plus another six. Right, so two sixes and a five, so 17 works. Then we have, let's see, well, 18, yep, three, three sixes is 18. How about 19? Can we do 19? 19 is not going to work. What about 20? 20 will work. 21, that's 15 plus six, right? We have 15 plus another six, so that's 21. 22, that's two sixes and two fives, so 22 will work. 23, hmm, 23. Well, that's 18 and 5, so 23 is going to work. How about 24? 24. Mm, that's four sixes, so 24 is going to work. 25, we know we're going to get 25. 26 will, will happen because you've got 20 plus another 6. And I think that actually we kind of figured this out. Now, it turns out that we actually have. From a strong induction standpoint, all we really needed is we needed five in a row. We needed five values in a row, okay? because they are going to constitute our basis. And if you think about it, if you've got five in a row, right, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24, so those are five terms in a row, then for anything after that, I can just add a five cent stamp. So 20 plus five is 25. 21 plus five is 26. 22 plus five is 27. 23 plus five is 28. 24 plus five is 29. And then we can just start over again. So we've actually shown, like what we can think about here is, is that, hey, look, now I've shown everything because I can get any amount that I want just by adding another five cent stamp, adding another five cent stamp. So what we have now is we have something, we have a proposition that we can actually go out and prove, okay? So what we're gonna say is, is that, well, we can do five, six, 10, 11, 12, 15, 16, 17, 18, and what we're gonna, we're going to hypothesize or propose is we can generate any amount of postage n greater than or equal to 20 using 5 and 6 cent stamps. So yes, there are some, um, some other ones that we can do, but we only are really interested in 20 and above because after that, that's the ones that are going out towards infinity. So how are we gonna do that? Well, first we have a basis, and we're gonna need 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. 
And the reason why that's gonna be the case is because at some point in time, we're gonna say, okay, I can do any amount for up to K minus four cents of postage. K minus four cents of postage, and then I'm gonna add five to that that's gonna give me K plus one. I'm still looking to you know, get to the K plus one term, I'm just gonna get there in a different way. So what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say, all right, so my basis step is gonna be these five because I have five cents of postage that I need to prove. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show that P of 20 is equal to four times five. That's four uh, five cent stamps. P of 21 is equal to three times five plus a six. P of 22 is equal to two times five plus two times six. P of 23 is equal to uh, one times five plus three times six. And P of 24 is just equal to uh, four times six. So that shows me that I've got 20 through 24 cents of postage covered, all right? So now I'm gonna do my inductive step. So we'll assume that we can create K cents of postage for any amount for K, for, excuse me, um, N greater than or equal to 20 and less than or equal to K. Okay, so we're gonna go all the way up to K cents of postage greater than or equal to 20, less than or equal to K, using five and six cent stamps. And so that is the first big difference here. Notice that our N is going to be greater than or equal to 20, less than or equal to K. So we go up to K, that's great, but we're actually going to include everything in between, okay? Everything in between K and 20. So, we can create, and this will be K minus four cents of postage. K minus four cents of postage is important because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a, a five cent stamp on. K minus four is also important because it shows you how important strong induction is. Notice it's not the kth term, it's the K minus fourth term. So it's actually a value in between, in this case, 20 and K. And since that's the case, Right, we need strong induction. We absolutely must do strong induction in order to do this proof, or else we actually don't have um, we we don't have our 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 our, our statement uh, adequately proved. So we got k minus four cents of postage. Thus, with one more five cent stamp, we have k plus one or k minus four plus five, which equals K plus one cents of postage. And we're done. We just showed that we get K plus one cents of postage. Thus, by induction, thus by induction, we can create any amount of postage n greater than or equal to 20 using five and six n stamps. Now it doesn't seem like this is like the most handy thing to do in the entire world, but when you're actually going through it and you're reading math, there's a lot of mathematics, some pretty tough mathematics actually, where strong induction is absolutely necessary, where we need it for every value up until, um, up until k. And we need to prove it for particular values up until that moment. And again, things like recurrence relations where we have more than just the bn term when we're trying to find bn plus one, when we have bn minus two, bn minus one, right? Any kind of those recurrence relations, you're gonna to have to use strong induction because you don't have just the immediately previous term, you've got all the terms that are happening before it. And basically what that means is, is that for each and every one of those terms, you've gotta prove those basis steps. That's the first part. So in our case, we had to prove five basis steps. Those five basis steps in order to give us the five cents of postage, right? 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. And then once we've done that, then it's just simply a matter of, you know, making, uh, creating the right assumption, 
okay? And, um, you know, which is basically the bottom of our basis step all the way up through K, right? And then doing just a little bit more work um, in terms of your overall proof in order to prove that your statement is in fact true. So hopefully this kind of helps you to, to see how it is that strong induction works. Um, I think it's a, a pretty simple uh, example, but uh, at least instructive. And notice it is fundamentally different. It's not just the kth term, it's the k, it's all the terms before k, from your basis step all the way to, to k.